All right, everybody, guess what? It's Kerry Bigsby, Urban Times Magazine, Music Magazine, and I get the distinct pleasure to talk to a gentleman who is, for all intents and purposes, he has just this global sound. I mean, from church playing drums at age seven, I mean, to moving toward gravitating, to jazz, to basically music that can't even just be contained. I want to introduce to our readers from San Fran, James Henry. What's going on, man? Oh, man, thank you for having me, please, on this show. Awesome. Everything is fabulous. And yourself today, Gary? Doing great, doing great. I'm doing even better now because I get to talk about some music. And, I mean, you know, I got a chance to definitely listen to your music, quite a number of tracks, you know, learn thank so much more about you over the past week. And, um, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm geared up. I'm ready for this. <laughs> awesome. I'm too. Thank you. So, I want to share with all of our followers, you know, one of the things about your music. I mean, it has been just a buzz, you know, and it's been that way for quite some time in that area. But, I mean, you guys just recently received Best CD in Northern California, I mean, up against a, a thousand bands. I mean, that's yes. that's nuts. Yes, yes. Um, uh, it was definitely an honor to get that award um, and to, to be noticed uh, of the music that we're putting out. It was basically a, a CD that we had um, put out called It Starts at Home. And um, that CD went, actually went really global um, several years ago, and um, that kind of actually motivated me to start writing music from, um, you know, the globe, different rhythms, not only from Africa, but Brazil, using some of the Brazilian uh, using the Afro-Cuban rhythms and trying to create some new music, um, and I, I call it uh, jungle funk, a new like gumbo. You know, you're putting a little bit of seasons in here, seasons in there, and and you come up with um, a juicy tracks. Ah, love gumbo. We love gumbo. I like that definitely. So, <laughs> has, what exactly has been your motivation? I mean, or like the driving force for you to take you know, this thing called music. I mean, you've been doing it for a while, and, I mean, it seems like each time you take it to a next level, a next level, a next level. I mean, what, what, what motivates you to do that? You know what actually motivated me to really start? I, I would just say starting from the church. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the church would really inspire me playing gospel music, and even today I still play with some of my uh, fabulous uh, gospel musicians, uh, one big producer by the name of Carl, Mr. Carl Wheeler, who works with Franklin Beverly and Mays, a uh, keyboard player. But what kind of inspired me is the music has a spirit to it, and it has a healing spirit to it, and it also has a learning spirit to it, which we've got gravitated away from. The music really was a language that all communities uh, could relate to. You know, let's just take, for instance, that song, I'm Black and I'm Proud. You know, once a mm -hmm. song is spread out and a message is in a song, it actually rejuvenates us and gives us hope. So what kind of given me drive to working with music was when I was playing jazz, I started off playing with uh, Art Blakely when I was like 17 years old and inspired mm -hmm. me to start playing jazz, which to me jazz was I loved it so much because it, it's an expression of music. Nothing's mm -hmm. wrong, nothing's right. Everything you do is great, but it's the language behind it. Well, after playing jazz for so long and, and playing with George Howard and then moving up to smooth jazz, um, I started developing different styles. And I realized that certain listeners were only listening to certain styles. And when I would play a different style of music to a different listener, they says, wow, man, I never really knew that you can combine funk with Afro-Cuban music. Well, what I'm trying to say in a lot of different ways, it's not only the music, it's the history behind the music. So if you really sit down and listen to a track and you study, wow, those drum tracks, where, where did that rhythm come from? It starts with the drums and it starts with the bass. Where does that actually come from? What tribe does that come from? Well, after a while, we stopped, we got really lazy and stopped um, investigating where different things came from. So it kind of motivated me to make music 
from different cultures, use different rhythms, and actually just put it in your face to make you curious to, wow, where did this come from? And, you know, so my music is really, I've been inspired with um, so many different cultures and so many different uh, musicians, ranging from Bobby McFerrin to, uh, once again, um, uh, the Santana to Sting. So I've taken all of that classical um, vocabulary and put it into one pot, which is a soup, which I'm trying to develop the music, which we are developing the music that's called Jungle Folk, because it really, the music starts from the root. And if anyone on the planet would ask you, where does really the true rhythm come from? If you go to Brazil, they're going to say it comes from Africa. When you go to Peru, they're going to say it comes from Africa. Well, people don't realize in all of these countries, in Brazil, in Africa, Mozambique, they have ghettos. And so just like we have ghettos here, in those ghettos, when the music gets there, it's really has a resin to it. It has a vocabulary, and then that's kind of where it's carried on. Um, So what motivated me to to really move on this is really to stimulate everybody's brain, um, to heal, and to also motivate and, and, and motivate, generate some energy these days. That's very good. And it's interesting because you said as far as us and just knowing where that music comes from and just the knowledge thereof. And, and I see that as well with you and how much community means to you and how you've tied that into Samba Samba Kids. Yes. Yes, I do a lot of community work um once again, I, I, I use a drum. I'm a music therapist. I use it as mm-hmm. a drum, as a therapeutic. Uh, my age starts with age three, which uh, I love work with the, the youth because they're sponges. They will mm-hmm. absorb anything and remember anything more so than, a, than an adult because if it gets to their hearts and that rhythm and they touch that rhythm and they get those chills, it locks into them. That's actually how I become to be a musician because – I never forget, I would pass by the office, and there was my principal uh, practicing trumpet. And it just inspired me. Well, how could he be a teacher and a musician? Well, see, mm-hmm. we was when I was coming up, we, we were only taught that you, you be good at one thing. Whatever you do, just be good at that. Well, now it, it really motivates me, and I want to motivate kids, not be good at one thing, but be good at a lot of things. So we, you have your options. So my students, they range from elementary school all the way up to 105 is one of my um, oldest students, which I go into the mm-hmm. senior citizens. And I play drums for them. I pass out uh, drum uh, um, percussion instruments, hands-on instruments to get them moving. What people don't really know is that the music is therapy therapeutic not only for our brain, our muscles for our brains, but for our senior citizens, they only respond to the rhythm and the music. They respond more than that than you give them pills once a month. Uh, Yes, indeed, music. And and, and that's so – I'm just flabbergasted by it because, I mean, you're talking about something that bridges the gap between the young and the old, and it is something that all of us can definitely relate to, which is music. I'm glad you mentioned that, too. I'm Absolutely. Glad you that Absolutely. It's, it's for yeah. everybody. It's for everybody, man. It's the youth. It brings us up. You know, it's, it's energy to us. If you notice, uh, um, what we hear on the radio today, is it juice? Mm-hmm. Is it stimulating us? Is it motivating us? Or is it just us being... Instead of being leaders, we'd be followers. So I'm trying to build leaders within my music. My music is all about, I truly believe in the community. If I didn't have the community, what, you know, what do we have? You know, if we don't talk to our neighbors, what do we have? If we don't dance on Sunday like we used to, you know, getting together with our friends, uh, you know, singing in the garage, and that doesn't happen anymore because of the digital uh, signals and also the cell phones. It's taken us away from even saying hello to anybody. Good point. Good point. Because music is basically a true form of communication, and we've kind of drifted away from actually really talking and communicating with each other. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. 
Well, what I tell the kids I, every morning is that if I'm teaching, doing a workshop on assembly, or, or even I've been doing a lot of workshops with, uh, with uh, drum circles with corporate companies, and they just love it because all of a sudden you're sitting behind a computer desk and you realize you haven't been talking to your friend. You've been working for five years. You haven't even said hello to each other. But as soon as I sit you down on a drum and you have to listen to each other, but you don't talk. You don't even need to talk. All you need to do is listen and pay attention. And that's why I call, um, when I uh, introduce music to the education kids, I call it science and music. Because I want them to think that music is a science. Indeed. Indeed. So I got to, it's okay. We always, during our interviews and such, we always got to have a trick question. So I've yes. got one definitely for you. All okay. right. So trick question from Mr. Henry. You yes. got to tell us, Hands on Fire Band. How did you come up with that name? Hands on Fire Band. Well, <laughs> I figured that, wow, that's quite interesting that you said that. Um, it's because our hands is the most important thing on the planet. Whatever mm -hmm. you do, if you're a kid, you're writing, if you're an adult, you're, you're a painter, if you're grandma, you, you're washing the dishes, our hands are on fire. Those are the most important tools that we have. Okay, I like that. I definitely like that. And the music that you guys have done has been just simply phenomenal as well. I mean, and the work from World Beat Music, I mean, the San Jose Jazz Festival, I mean, yes. you travel, I mean, touring yes. the world. I mean, you, you, you guys have been busy. Yes. I mean, yes, we have. They, they really, yes, they really received us uh, uh, very well over in New Zealand, Australia. Um, I even done some some work in Africa, Senegal, mm -hmm. which I'm mm -hmm. in, uh, which I'm putting the word out. Please go to Africa. It's not that expensive at all. And the first thing they're gonna say when you get there is they're gonna say, "What took you so long?" Oh. It is, it, <laughs> it's so beautiful. So, you know, I take a little bit of everything from different cultures. Um, and, and and what I realize after traveling the world, we're all the same. We're all mm -hmm. the same. I don't care. If, you know, in, in Africa they speak French. It was really funny but i have to share this with you when i was in africa i stayed up to try to learn a little french to communicate french and people don't realize that america we are everything to everybody else that's not in america they copy everything we do our hair our shoes the way we talk the way we dress so i'm here in senegal getting ready to play this album for radio station and I'm really nervous because i got to communicate with this gentleman through the interview. Well, I get up there, and I said, Pali Fubanse. And he looks at me, and he says, hey, my nigga, what's going on? <laughs> but I go, what? And I realized I tried to have a conversation with him after that, and he didn't know how to speak English. The, only, the next thing they asked me is, oh, have you seen Baywatch? And I realized that we are eight years, ten years ahead of everybody. And so I just want the youth to realize that when you write a song, don't think that song is just being heard in America. It's been heard around the world, and they're copying everything we say. So I just want to put out there on the air for these young writers, young producers, just be aware of what's in the song because it's being heard. Definitely, and I'm glad you even mentioned that because someone just recently uh, during a an interview on a red carpet was saying how music today is nothing like music, we'll say, 20 years from now, um, and how basically when artists put music out, there were more of a, a thought process, there was a reason yeah. and an element to yeah. reach others, while music right now is being put out to, quote-unquote, get paid from but there's no substance Ab so absolutely um, absolutely i have to totally agree with that but i, I also want to say songwriters out there continue to do your work if you really 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 want to do some work you have to learn how to collaborate with people you have to learn how to write with people 
learn how to sit down and write a song together. Because what's, what's happening, the system is making us do everything by ourselves and says, oh, I want to get all the money myself. Well, what happens is you're hurrying up writing a song, but you it has no substance to it. It has no mm-hmm. movement to it. Right here, you probably hear a verse, a hook, and that's it. No, sit down. This is what I have to say to all the all the writers out there, musicians. You know what they call it? Wisdom. You probably heard that before from your grandparents, wisdom. Well, if you go back and you do your homework, and I've also worked for Harvey Fuqua, who found Marvin Gaye. Go mm-hmm. back and listen to some of Marvin Gaye's records. Go back and listen to some of Stevie Wonder's records. See how it's laid. See how it's shaped. You know, you want to shape a song. And a song is like, I would say, two things. It's like a good bowl of ice cream or a good bottle of wine. It will never age if you do it right. Ooh, that was deep right there. It's like a good bowl of ice cream or a good bottle of wine. It will not age. It will never it age. It will never. It, it, it <laughs> will only. And so the songs that you hear back in our days, that's why all the young folks are going to the listen, going back and doing the research, because they realize, wow, what is different? What What's the difference? Well, the difference is number one. I have to be honest with you. When we record, we record it with tape. Now we mm-hmm. record with a signal, numbers. And so what I do, I'll give you a trick out there in Wonderland, is after I run my music through digital signals, then I dump it down on tape, mix it, make it warm, and come back again. That way you you can feel the music Mm. instead of hearing the music. Does that make sense? Oh, definitely. Definitely, yeah, because back in the day, it used to be levels to the music. You know, you had different you know, instruments being played, certain people coming in, right. and there were so many different levels that you can yeah. actually, if you played it and you, you heard it in each in each of the speakers or in each of the he- headphones, you could hear the levels. Now right. it just seems like everything is just on one plane. Level. And yeah, exactly. there's, no, there's, no, there's no depth, there's no richness. You're right. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Well, you know, it just really just comes from, no, you know, no one pushing you. And, and, and I'm going to be honest, you know, you go back in my track, and you, and I surprised a lot of people how long I've been really doing this for. But I never was a person that's, that wanted to get signed with a big major company like all of my friends because what happens is when you do that, it's something about t- they take your spirit away because then they you make one good two albums, well, you have to make it exactly like that. Well, a good creator, no, we, we can't make that soup over again like that. We can make some better soup, different seasons, but you do not want to be put in a position to where you're told you've got to write this song here because you need more songs. So mm-hmm. my music is all about my life. It's all my life. I take my time, um, and I finally got to this point and even – thanking you for even giving me this interview because now James Henry and Hands on Fire is ready to let the world know that it's more than just a digital signal. I like that too. That's that's that may be the title of this, more than just a digital signal. Yes, yes. indeed. Yes. <laughs> yes. So James, how can our people yes. follow you and learn more about your music, be more involved with what you're doing with Samba Samba Kids as well as you know, basically, when you're Absolutely. going to play the next time, you and the group, you got to share with everyone. But, well, the, you know, um, um, the way you can go to our resources is definitely if you go uh, jameshenryhere.com, you can go to that mm-hmm. website, or you can go to jameshenryhandsonfire.com, you can go to that site. You also can ch- uh, check out our schedule on jameshenryoceanfire.com. Okay, to our products, you can go check out our CDs. I even have a great CD. Uh, if anyone ever interested in studying about Kwanzaa, I have a nice Kwanzaa CD. And if you go to cdbaby.com and put in James Henry, you can see our whole catalog. Wonderful. Thank you. And family, y'all heard it first right here. 
with Mr. James Henry. But before we go, I'm about to play a track for you right now from his current signal. See, excuse me, his current single that is out right now. I mean, it's called "If You Want Me to Stay." I want you to check it out right now. Available for you to see But I'm about to go And then you'll know For me to stay here I got to be me You'll never be in doubt That's what it's all about You can take me for granted and smile Count the days I'm gone Forget reaching me by the phone Because I promise I'll be gone for a while Oh, 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 baby If you want me to stay Oh, baby See, care is giving Oh, 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 baby If you want me to stay If you want me And when you see me again I hope that you have been The kind of person you really are now I got to get in straight How could I ever be late When you're the woman taking up my time oh, I could never allow I guess I wonder how I got to get out of pocket for fun How, how And when you know that you're never number two, baby Number one is gonna be number one. Ow, ow. Oh, 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 baby. If you want me to stay, oh, baby. Seek your escaping. Oh, 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 baby. If you want me to stay, if you want me, I'll be good. I wish I could. I get this message over to you now ah, When I see you again I hope that you have been The kind of person you really are now Said I'll be good, baby I wish I could I get this message over to you now, now, now Gotta get a message to you I said, I, I gotta get a message to you, baby